future as well as find out little bits about yourself as well. So I will have to give you a little disclaimer firstly. The tarot is not something that's set in stone. Whatever cards I may draw for you does not necessarily mean that that is your fate and there's nothing you can do to change it. The future is always changing, however, depending on your choices, what you decide to do, you can make your situation better or worse. The tarot is merely used to give you insight into the current path that you're on and give you advice if needed. So, let me go ahead and pop this out of its box. Alrighty, this tarot deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you place your hand on this deck right here. And what I want you to do is think about a question or a situation that you would like insight on that you wish to see a little bit more clearly into. And when you're thinking about your question or situation, it's best to think about how the outcome will be, what kind of progress you want to see within about one to three months is generally best. Alright, just place your hand on the deck and think about your question or your situation. So I'm going to be shuffling these cards. Now, the spread for today is going to be the Celtic Cross. The Celtic Cross uses 10 cards. And this will give you information as to some of the root causes, some things you should be looking out for, certain lessons or experiences that may help influence you. A 
really helps look into several different facets of your situation. Alright, now if you could just place your hand again on the top of the deck here. And just hold it. Very good, and then we'll take the first ten cards off the deck. Let's go ahead and take a look at your spread here. So what I'm first noticing is that there were quite a few cups in this spread and sometimes different oh, reoccurring themes, if you will, pop up and sometimes they mean things, sometimes they don't, sometimes it's kind of a happy coincidence. So firstly, there was a lot of cups and cups are associated with femininity, as well as the element water. Another thing that popped up is the number eight. That was quite a few different cards there. And the number eight in the tarot represents courage and represents hope. So that's a pretty good start to our tarot, I think. Let's look at your first card. So your first card represents the heart of the matter or what's important to you. So here we have the seven of pentacles. So the seven of pentacles, you have a man standing here and he's looking upon his garden covered in all these different pentacles. So this card represents patience as well as assessment can also represent trial and error. So when we take this with our heart of the matter spot, it's telling me that perhaps you've been working on something, whether it's a project, a goal on yourself, and this is a good time to take a moment to reflect on what you've done, to reassess if you are doing the right thing, is this working out for you? Perhaps should you try something different? It may also be a good sign that perhaps you bring in an outsider that you trust into the situation, into your project or goal, and ask them about their opinions of it. Ask for some critique. But I want you to make sure that you're not taking anything personally and that you aren't upset with what's given to you because this information will help you in the long run, okay? All right, so let's put that back there and we'll go on to our next card. So this is the opposing factor. This is going to be the challenge that you are faced with and with that we have the Eight of Wands. Now the Eight of Wands, we have all of our wands, we have a nice little river flowing through the rolling hills here. So the Eight of Wands, this represents progress, energy, swiftness. When combined with the opposing factor spot that it's taken up, this tells us that perhaps your project, your goal, whatever you've been working on, it may be progressing ahead of you, it may take off, and if you're prepared for it, then it'll work out great, but if you're not, 
you have any loose ends or anything that's not quite right, it may get ahead of you and you may not be able to stop that progress. So it's also a card of we need to reflect on if whatever we're working on, whatever goal we're working towards, if we have all our bits in place, we have our P's and Q's minded, okay? So let's look at our third card, which is the root cause. And this would be the foundation of your situation. It could be your motivation. And you can hear the cat snoring in the background. <laughs> this is the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles represents a wildly successful man. And in the root cause, this could represent that you wish to encounter someone like this, you wish to know someone like this, or they're going to be coming into your life, or perhaps you wish to channel this and become that yourself as well. It's very open-ended, but it could be any of those situations. Now, when I say wildly successful man, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a man at all. Perhaps I should say a wildly successful person, okay? So let's move on to the fourth card, which is our known influence. So this is what you already know to be true. It could represent your beliefs about the situation. It could represent your aspirations as well. So here we have the Eight of Cups. And we see somebody leaving the cups here. We see the water, the terrain, the moon and the sun. But as this card looks, it's a card of moving on and letting go. So, when combined with the known influence spot, this could tell us that either you are aware that you have to move on, you're aware that you have to let go, or you know that you are already going to do that. And it's not going to be a painless process either. And you can tell that from just the general stance of this person that this has been a long journey or they're going to be embarking on a long journey after this. So there's going to be some turmoil there. There's going to be some heartache. And when we couple this with the known influence, that means you are probably already aware that it was going to be difficult, but you're going to have to move on. Now, let's see here. So, for our past influences card, this is going to be the lesson or the experience that is affecting you now. So, this could be how perhaps you've acted or felt like in the past when faced with a similar situation. And in this card, we have the Eight of Swords. We have all of our swords. We have someone who is bound and blinded. And this represents helplessness. It represents kind of a victim mentality. So perhaps in the past, you've made some excuses as to why you couldn't do something, why it wouldn't work out, why it just wasn't going to happen. And so you're kind of drawing on that right now, that this is what happened before, and you know, that's affecting you right now. So this is telling you that perhaps it's time to get out of that mentality. Perhaps it's time to move on from that and embrace a different perspective. Now we have the emperor in the new circumstances spot. And the new circumstances is going to be what may come into your life or what may change the situation. So the emperor here, this represents power, represents authority. It may resent, represent a father figure as well. So perhaps someone 
of power, of authority, or perhaps you will find new power, new authority, and you'll be able to change your circumstances, change your outcome. So it may be something that you draw from or somebody that comes into your life. And with the emperor and the father figure sort of aspect to that, it may perhaps be someone older, like a mentor kind of deal that may be coming into play with that. So for card number seven, this is going to represent yourself, how you see yourself. It's a very interesting card. This is the Seven of Swords. We can see a man and he's carrying off some swords. This could represent strategy. It could also represent deception or manipulation. So when we take this into consideration with it being in the self spot, this may tell us that perhaps you have stolen something, whether it's ideas or something literal, or someone has stolen that away from you. It also could represent that perhaps you've been collecting ideas from other people, that maybe you're walking the line of plagiarism, or apart from all that, it could also mean that you are feeling guilty for something, and it could be something that you've already done or you're thinking about doing. And this is something that you would have to, if you haven't already done it, perhaps think about going about it a better way. Or if you've already done it, perhaps thinking about atoning for that, owning up to it, and from there, going a better way. So for our next card, we have the surrounding environment. This could be literally the environment that surrounds you. It could also mean the resources that are available to you. It could also represent other people's perspective on you or your situation. And we have the Seven of Cups here. So in the Seven of Cups card, we have many different things in each of these cups. So it's not a stretch to infer that this is a card of fantasy or illusion. It also could be creativity as well. So when we take this with the surrounding environment, it means that you could have a lot of different decisions, a lot of different choices, and perhaps that means that you're not really sure what to do, what to decide, where to go, there's so many things to do, but you also have to know that indecision is a choice as well. So this also could mean that perhaps you need to shake things up a little bit and maybe add a little whimsy to your life. Perhaps if you've had a very rigid structure, perhaps if you've had a very scheduled sort of life or way of going about life right now, that perhaps it's time to change it up and you may be able to get new ideas, new creativity from changing that. So next we have the ninth card, which is going to be the guidance, and that's literally what guides you. So we have the nine of cups here, right here. So we have a very smug looking man and we have all of our cups here. And this represents wish fulfillment. It could also represent overindulgence. As I see it, it's kind of like getting everything you want and still craving more, even. So this could be something that perhaps you've been really wanting something, some things. You've been wanting a way of life, perhaps materialistic things, this can also represent. And that is what is guiding you. That is what is influencing you. So you'll want to take care that you're keeping a healthy mindset of 
staying more on the humble side and perhaps being mindful that you're not overindulging. So for the last card, we have the outcome. And this is going to be the outcome of you, your situation. It may even be a lesson that you take from it. So for our outcome card, we have the Knight of Cups. And with the Knight of Cups, this is a card that represents an artistic person who loves art and beauty. They can also be quite emotionally intense. They could be idealistic, quite a dreamer. So when we're taking that with the outcome, this could represent how you may end up, how someone in your circle may end up, or it might be something that you experience and learn from later on. That might also go hand in hand with if it's perhaps someone you know, then you're observing their actions, you're learning from what they're doing, what not to do, right? So the Knight of Cups is someone who really, really enjoys life, he enjoys beauty, but can be quite fickle as well. So that may be something to watch out for, to try to avoid. But I think overall, that's, that's a pretty good spread, I would say. I think that, you know, I don't know your situation or what you've been thinking about, but overall, it's giving me the sense that there is a lot of change to come and what you've been working on hopefully will come to fruition and hopefully you will be prepared for that. And at the very end, you may learn quite a few things along the way. So I think that, I think that's a pretty good spread. So how are you feeling about it? What are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to keep in mind that these things tend to be more vague than specific and oftentimes you won't realize the connections until they've already happened. I know I've done several readings for myself where I'm like, this is a really weird spread. I don't know what it's telling me. But then once the situation has passed, you've realized that each card has represented something that happened or a person that was there. It's really, it's quite eerie sometimes. So just keep that in mind. And again, it doesn't, the cards are not set in stone. This is just one possible path that you may take, okay? All right, so that ends your tarot card reading. I really do hope that you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I hope you have a whale of a day and a good rest of your night.